Good morning everyone and welcome to another Irish Crypto video. Today's markets have seen a 2.5% increase almost. The market cap has gone up and it's inching closer to 900 billion. There is still some way to go. It's standing at 875 billion for now. Bitcoin's price is still depressed. Ethereum's price continues to be depressed as well. Still below the $20,000 psychological level. It made some inroads, however, it still remains quite low. The rest of the markets have reacted positively. There was some sort of correction yesterday, I think because the Grayscale's spot Bitcoin ETF application got rejected. There was a massive pullback in the market, but I think the pullback was a bit exaggerated and it was out of proportion. And therefore today that has been corrected and the prices have gone up to where they should actually be to reflect current market conditions. Looking at Solana up by 5%, Dogecoin up by 4%, Looking at the top 50 coins, they're basically all up, even going down to the top 100 coins. All of them are virtually up. So it is a good sign for now, temporarily. There has been a lot of deleveraging going on in the market. Healthy signs have been teeming in the market. And if there weren't so many risks in the market, such as geopolitical, economic and social, then I think the prices would be a lot higher than it is now due to the fact that these risky assets suffer the most when there are crises in the world. Looking at the price of Bitcoin, we can see here that the price decreased significantly yesterday from over 20,000 to 18,700 or even 600. And this was due to Grayscale's application for a spot Bitcoin ETF getting rejected. But we see a massive green candle here flirting with the $20,000 level. And I think it reached $20,000 and it was on its way to 22,000 until the bears got back into the market. If you see here, it reached 21,000. Then there was a massive red candle, which pulled down all these gains and pushed the prices back to 20,000. And if we look back, since around the 15th of June, the prices have been trading at an average of $20,000. And it remains here. And I think for the foreseeable future, it will remain around this level until there is a normalization of the inflation rate around the world, especially in the European Union and especially in the United States, as well as until the conflicts that are happening around the world, especially the one in Eastern Europe, are tamed down and maybe even resolved. Yesterday, there was a bit of good news uh, with the fact that negotiations between uh, the two parties, the Russian and the Ukrainian president, seem more likely than before. And maybe there will be a channel of communication open. However, that's just rumors going around and maybe this green candle encompassed that. It's all rumors. We don't know if it's true, but the markets react to any news, even if it's false. So there was some optimism here and then the optimism quickly faded with the prices going down. We could say that these three red candles are a correction from this massive green candle, but we don't know if it's due to deleveraging or due to a risk correction. On to some news, Coinbase denies reports of selling customer data to the US government. So yesterday, there was news circulating around social media, circulating around news outlets that Coinbase has been providing geolocation data to the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency in the United States. And because of this, Twitter users uh, such as Solobase Mac, who is quite well known, were shocked and noted that they didn't sign up for that. However, in a statement on Twitter, Coinbase clarified that the firm does not sell proprietary customer data and the exchange highlighted that its foremost priority is giving a safe and secure experience to users of the platform. Additionally, the crypto platform has also explained that its Coinbase tracer tools are created to comply with government requirements. So these tracer tools are um, mainly to trace where transactions are coming from and where they're going and they're mainly used to investigate finance-related crimes such as terrorist financing and money laundering. And Coinbase is complying with government requirements and whenever the government needs information relating to certain transactions, they can use this Coinbase tracer tool in order to track uh, illicit or dubious transactions. And according to the exchange Coinbase, the information they provide to the government comes from only public sources and not from Coinbase user data. I don't know how much of that is true because in, if they're complying with government requirements and if they're collaborating with government agencies, especially the SEC, I think that this could be a bit of a stretch, but 
we have to trust what they say for now. And I think where this rumor came about that um, Coinbase is selling data or giving data to the Immigration and, Inf and Customs Enforcement is that in September 2021, Coinbase inked a deal with the ICE for developing software for the government agency. The agreement compels the exchange to provide application development software as a service to the ICE in exchange for almost $1.5 million. And maybe this type of news has been taken out of proportion and people have been sort of speculating that they're selling information to ICE. But uh, they have cleared up that this is not true. And, and now we're waiting for an official statement from ICE to state or corroborate with Coinbase to say that, you know, the information that's circulating online isn't true. On other news, hundreds of Bored Ape owners sign up to hire out their NFTs to brands. They have signed up to a new licensing marketplace that enables hodlers to rent out their ape IPs or intellectual property to brands. So Blockchain Accelerator, Mouse Belt Labs, launched a marketplace called Board Jobs, claiming that it will list all 10,000 Board Ape Yacht Club's NFTs on its website for brands to browse through and indicate interest in hiring for campaigns. Obviously, not all 10,000 NFTs will be available to hire unless the owners of those NFTs sign up and confirm ownership to view such offers. How this can work is the brand can hire a Bored Ape NFT and it will bring the deal to the owner of the NFT. If both parties agreed, then the deal move forward. Being questions on how the apes can be utilized by brands, they said that it can be as simple as a small business wanting to make an ape the face of their coffee brand or as part of a large scale marketing campaign for large businesses. And as you all know, Board Ape Yacht Club is the biggest NFT collection in the world and the most famous one. And it provides their owners with the commercial rights and hodlers are using them in creative ways. For example, a Hollywood actor, Seth Green, is using his ape as the main character in an upcoming TV show. Also in April, food entrepreneur and Board Ape Yacht Club NFT owner, Andy Nguyen, also decided to launch a Board Ape Yacht Club themed restaurant named Bored and Hungry in Long Beach, California. And there are a lot of famous people who own these type of NFTs and this opens a massive uh, array of possibilities whereby these famous people such as Eminem and Snoop Dogg, for example, can rent out their NFTs to massive brands who want to use them in campaigns. And because NFTs are being more accepted now and the world is moving towards more digital, I believe that such deals will, will take place whereby if there are marketing campaigns, instead of physically being there, the owners of the NFTs, famous people, for example, Eminem, once again, can rent out their NFTs for the campaigns. So let's say, for example, Hugo Boss wants to launch a new line of hats. Eminem can then rent out his NFT to Hugo Boss to be used in a marketing campaign for those hats. And it's a clever way to do business as well, because Everyone knows that who owns that NFT is Eminem and it sort of is a digital representation of the rapper. Right now, they only support Board Ape Yacht Club's NFTs. However, Mouse Belt will expand to support other top tier NFT projects. And this is very interesting because now we're seeing a lot more creative ways to use NFTs rather than holding and selling and being used as speculation. We are finally getting use cases for such products. Obviously, this doesn't apply to anyone or everyone. It will most likely benefit famous people, people who are more well known because it bodes well for companies to use them in uh, marketing campaigns and in any campaigns that they might have. So it will be interesting to see how you and I, owners of normal Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs, can use this platform to monetize and to take advantage of this utility. On other news, better days ahead with crypto deleveraging coming to an end, says JP Morgan. So the historic deleveraging of the cryptocurrency market could be coming to an end, which could signal the close of the worst of the bear market. There has been increased willingness of firms to bail out companies, and there has been a healthy pace of capital funding in May and June as the basis for the optimism. So according to JP Morgan's estimate, there was about $5 billion in VC crypto funding to crypto firms in May and June of 2022. The rate of funding is down 2.2 billion from March and April, but up 3.4 billion from May and June 2021. And this is a good sign for the market because 
it signals that there is initiative and there is trust on the part of venture firms that crypto firms are going to do well going forward. So they're pumping money into the crypto market with the hopes of massive profits because that's all venture capital funds want. So if they're trusting the crypto firms to make the money, then it means that they see something that you and I don't see with their thousands of well-trained analysts. Maybe they see that, you know, we're at the worst of the bear market and things can only get better from now. And remember that the deleveraging of major crypto firms where their assets have been sold willingly or in a rush or via liquidation began largely in May when the Terra ecosystem collapsed and wiped out billions of dollars. And among the victims was crypto lenders BlockFi and Celsius and investment firm Three Arrows Capital because they were in such massively leveraged positions that once the prices dropped significantly, they didn't even have enough time to put up more collateral to save their butts and therefore they suffered margin calls and they lost a lot of money. But it seems like this is coming to an end and because a lot of liquidation has taken place, the market has been massively deleveraged and it's sort of like a clean slate now going forward and hopefully the worst of the bear market is over as JP Morgan says. And the latest predictions from JP Morgan should blow fresh air into the hearts of crypto investors in 2022 who have endured what Glassnode has deemed the worst bear market in the history of crypto trading. So there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully the prices start rising and a lot of more money flows into the crypto industry. And not only that, what's most important is that these projects bring real utility to users like you and I. And with that, we come to the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and share this video with your family and friends. Invest wisely and cheers.